Hey, this goes out to Mighty from Ash. And now there is a new YouTube channel called the Awesome Blackness Channel. How awesome is that? So make sure you go to YouTube and check them out and see all of the awesome things that black people are doing and see all the awesome black people, all right? Hello, YouTube, and welcome to the Awesome Blackness Channel, or ABC for short. My name is Mighty, and on this platform, I'm going to explore the awesomeness of our black people. That's right, whether you're big or small, celebrity or civilian, anywhere in the world, if you're awesome, you're featured here. And it's time to drop another nugget. It is without question that I had to include Mr. Carson on the channel, and you'll certainly see why as we go along. This American singer and stage, voice, and television actor is best known for portraying, in my opinion, two of the most iconic and utterly different characters in media. First, there was Kyle Barker. Then, there was his long-running voice role as Kratos. I will explore those two roles in depth and more, but first, born on the 19th of November in 1958 in Chicago, Illinois, Terrence T.C. Carson attended the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign and in 1981 became a member of the Iota Phi Theta fraternity. He began his career as a dancer, but his first stage performances were in The Wiz, Dreamgirls, and Ain't Misbehaving. He was also in The Colored Museum at the Victory Gardens Theater, to which he received a Joseph Jefferson Award for Actor in a Review in 1988. In 1989, Carson appeared in an uncredited role for the TV movie A Mother's Courage, The Mary Thomas Story, a movie peppered with some other awesome blackness in their humble beginnings. Moreover, this is a story of the humble beginnings of one of the most talented players in the NBA, Isaiah Thomas, not the millennial one, the boom one. Carson's next role was in Living Large, which is about a young black delivery man named Dexter Jackson in Atlanta, Georgia, who aspires to become a news reporter. He gets what he considers his big break when he drives up to a hostage situation. When the reporter on the scene is killed, Dexter steps in and confronts the hostage taker, who threatens to kill himself on live television. However, Dexter talks the man out of it, and the ratings-obsessed executive producer offers Dexter a reporter position at News 4 Atlanta. Unbeknownst to me at the time, the recurring gag throughout the film involved involved Dexter seeing himself on TV with notably different facial features, i.e. thinner lips, straight hair, and a lighter complexion. In essence, he was turning white, so as to signify him selling out the more successful he became. You know, as a youngster at the time, I wasn't able to appreciate the movie's overall theme. You know, I just saw this one scene. I guess I deserve it. I peaced out. I didn't know what was going on, but I was having no parts of it. And it wasn't until I caught the whole movie on here of all places was I able to sit down and watch it and catch all of the symbolism. Okay, so I realized when I was editing this and I had to review what I was actually scared of in this movie, <laughs> I had the realization that I was a very easily scared child. And it's almost embarrassing. This story is not only timeless, but relatable. You know, one of my biggest fears at the prospect of success in any capacity is if I would ever have to compromise myself in any way to attain or maintain success. I guess we'll see if this channel ever takes off. In 1993, Carson starred in a Fox comedy, Key West, where he played a Caribbean native with an accent as convincing as mine. That hour-long show lasted only 13 episodes, but Fortune would smile on the actor as he would go on to star in the breakout series, Living Single, the most watched show in African-American households in the five seasons it was aired, and the undoubted prototype for some other shows that feature an ensemble cast about six friends in their mid to late 20s who reside in the same apartment complex navigating the sometimes humorous complexity of love and career. As mentioned, Carson played Kyle Barker, a stockbroker who was successful, moderately wealthy, suave, and articulate, to say the least, paired with about a 75% Godiva chocolate Erica Alexander, who played attorney Maxine Shaw. The image of this power couple was a refreshing update to what us 80s babies were being weaned off of. His character was a series regular for the first four seasons and bumped to recurring status for the remainder of the series' run due to Carson's alleged clash with the new writers. There's a video by Comedy Hype news in which Carson explains in more detail the clash and his suspected blackball as a result. Although there may be credence to the claim that he couldn't find work in the time thereafter living single, his credits still reveal he got work, most notably in voice acting. For example, Carson provided the voice of Samuel in the PBS Kids animated series Clifford the Big Red Dog, Mace Windu in the animated series Star Wars, 
Clone Wars and the video game series of the same name, and Afro Samurai as the Swordmaster, Street Preacher Ray, Bioshock Infinite, EverQuest 2 as Gringash the Black. He has provided the male voice of Gilio in the GameCube RPG Batten Kaitos Origins and is the voice of Touchstone in the PlayStation Portable Shooter Siphon Filter Dark Mirror. But again, his most notable role behind the mic is voicing Kratos for the original God of War for the PlayStation 2, with his final voice acting of the character in God of War Ascension for the PlayStation 3, in which he also did the motion capture. This brings his total number of appearances in the series to six. Additionally, Carson provided Kratos' voice where he was a downloadable character in Everybody's Off 5 and a guest character in Soul Calibur, Broken Destiny, and Mortal Kombat, and PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. And though Christopher Judge took over the role in the God of War Remix, Reboot, Remake? For the PlayStation 4, gamers who are a fan of the series, such as myself, acknowledge Carson's turn as the Ghost of Sparta as standing alone. I think what we have here is a situation where the space for greatness is filled with slots for each generation. Also a singer, which isn't a surprise to us. You make me smile with my heart. Carson has three albums to his name, Truth, Live in Beverly Hills, and Love, Loss in Life. So what makes him awesome is apparent. Doing research on Carson revealed a lot of parallels between he and I. Both of us are Chicago natives. Careers started on a stage, mine also apparently died there. He has a penchant for singing. Carson also mentioned modeling parts of his Kyle Barker character from his father. I could see a lot of my father in him as well. Impeccably dressed, smelled great, had a hat for every outfit, professional, articulate. Carson is not only a consummate professional, but also another kindred spirit of mine, whose low-key and interesting career I can only wish to replicate. He is known and well-respected in the circles of our culture, who are from the 90s kind of world. Because he emanated the image that was sorely needed at the time, still needed now, it is why he is always and will be awesome blackness. In any event, I'm looking for Carson to take one more iconic role, preferably in another video game, and I'll be good. Until then, I'm going back through that notable series again to get my feel. Okay, so thanks for watching, and thanks for getting us close to the mark. The milestone of a thousand subs is just within reach, and you all have the time and space to make that goal happen. So let's do this. Another goal of 30 ABCs is just around the corner as well, and I am contemplating doing something special. What could it be? You know what you have to do. In the meantime, if you like what you've seen, keep the love coming the best way you know how by liking and sharing. Get more people to like, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you know when I drop another nugget. And until then, you all stay awesome here. Peace.